woman has a great need for. We need, you know, needs are different from one. So not so the need is like you need it for your survival. You need it for your happiness as a woman. And by the way, I want to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers, wherever you are, those of you who will be on the platform today. And I'm sure we're going to send out a shout out a little bit later on, Sister Giselle, before we close off, yeah? Amen. All right. Nice, nice. And so we want to get straight into, into it, you know. Sister Giselle, when I think about this topic, seven things a woman desperately needs. I think, I said, God, needs are in line with God's will. I believe that what a woman needs is sort of what God would have said in his word that a woman needs from a man. Remember, the, the, the topic is what every man should know. I think about 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, where it says, live with her according to your knowledge of her. Dwell with her according to knowledge. And then Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25, that speaks about washing her with the word, loving her and giving up yourself, giving up your life, the Bible says, as Jesus gave up for, for, for the bride. All right, so I kind of just wanted to put those two scriptures on the platform, all right? And um, for me, Sister Giselle, before we get into it, I wanted to say something to the folks, and then we're going to get straight into it. Sister Giselle, you hearing me? Okay, can you repeat, please? I don't hear you up yes. clearly. Yes. I was saying that before we get straight into yes. it, I just want you to say something to the folks before we get into our conversation today. Okay, so a uh, pleasant good afternoon again to each and every one. We want to welcome you on this platform. We know that you would be edified. We know that you would be built up. And we know that a life would be changed. A life would be encouraged this afternoon as we share with you. And as a person say, you know, we relax and we share together what you know, that we as women, you know, really need um, from husbands and yeah, significant others. Amen. So God bless you all richly. Yes. Yes, thank you so much. Is, is, am I breaking up? Is my internet giving trouble? Are you picking me up, Sister Giselle? You're breaking up a bit. Yes, a person. Yeah, it makes sense. So. Kind of a little delay. Yeah, so, okay. I don't know why that is happening, but, you know, I pray that the Spirit of God will just flow through and take charge today. The first thing I want to put on the table is personal vision. A man, a woman needs to know that a man, the man in her life, or that women need to know that men have personal vision for their lives, a clear personal vision. And I, I just, what I felt and I needed to put that piece, a man with a vision, a man with a vision. The Bible says without vision, my people perish. So I, I really believe that that personal vision is so critical and even, that's the first thing I really wanna put on the platform. And even persons that I would have spoken of, um, talked about the vision. Uh, a woman needs her man to have a clear vision and purpose and destiny for, for the both of them and for himself and for her also, all right? That is very, very important. I will add a little bit more to that too, but Sister Giselle, I want you to come and write it. Yes, Apostle, you know, I agree with you with the being, having a vision, as you said, you know, the word of God says, without vision of people perish. And as mm -hmm. a, a leader, you know, a male, is supposed to be a husband, is supposed to be a leader. And if he doesn't have a vision for where his wife or his family is going, that, you know, the word of God said it, that, you know, um, they, would, they would perish. If we want to use that word, they would perish. And I also want to add purpose, having a purpose yes. in his life, as well as a purpose for her. They, both of them working together with that purpose that God would have given them for their life together and the family. So purpose is important. So it means that we have to, un the, 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 the man has to understand his purpose and understand who he is in Christ. Yeah, that's right. You're very correct. And if I may add as well, destiny. You know, destiny, you must know where you're going. 
Yeah, and I believe even as I'm Sister Jesus has spoken about purpose, the vision and the purpose and the destiny, very, very critical for not only for himself, but for the both of them. And also he must have it for her as well. All right, and we're speaking here to single men. All right, he must not be intimidated by who she is and must be able to cultivate who she is. All right, and when we talk about vision and purpose, I believe that everyone, even the woman, as well needs to know what a purpose and must have a vision for her life so that when you meet, when, when the man meets with you, you as well know where you are going. You as well know, have an idea as to your, your short term, your medium term, your long term. I really believe that for a man, it cannot just be the long term. When we speak about vision, we're speaking about the futuristic, but it must be even the short and the medium term as well. You must be able to tell me where you are at where you intend to be for the next five years or three, four, five years, and then even further afield. I think it's very, very important. And um, even as we're talking about, this, about purpose, I believe as well that the purpose is not what you think it should be, but I believe that it must be God's purpose and destiny and vision for your life. That makes a difference. Now, why vision? Vision keeps a man from being distracted, and it allows that man to live with a sense is driven by purpose and vision and destiny. There is no need for him to be intimidated by his woman. You know where you're going. You are able to cultivate hers. All right. And so that is going to eliminate that jealousy. And that brings me to the second point. All right. He himself must must not be envious of, 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 of the woman. You know, sometimes it's just that a lot of men are envious. They're intimidated by, by, um, by the female in their life. And so my other point is, a woman desperately needs to know that her husband or that significant person in her life is not jealous and intimidated by her. Because when that happens, it means that you will not celebrate a success, it means that you will not want to push her, may I want another word, or to encourage her to accomplish, you know, and you are that one to nurture what is on the inside of her and catapult her to that place that God wants her to be. We don't want a, a woman doesn't want a man who is envious, he has a problem and she's well, she wants to better herself, she wants to take a course, she wants to do something, and then he, he just kind of wants to keep her back, you know, and he's grousing every minute, why you have to do this and why you have to do that? But what we are saying is that a man with a vision and a man who knows where he's going, a man who understands his purpose and destiny is a man as well who will be secure in himself, and there's no need for him to be jealous, envious of the woman in his life. And he will want to really encourage her to accomplish what God would want her to accomplish. All right. And I also want to add a woman who thrives, and this is what one she knows what is going on in, 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 um, in the man's heart, what is going on, what is the man's plans, what is your, your purpose, what is your vision, where are you going? A woman thrives when she knows, all right, what you're doing. She needs clear definition. A woman doesn't want to go with the flow. She doesn't want to go with the flow. She wants you to be able to lay out a plan and say, babe, this is what we're doing, you know? This is what I would like us to do based on, on my plan and my purpose and your plan and your vision. We bring it together and I see where, you know, we can go here and because of what you bring, you can help me as well as I go here and I will help you and be working together, all right? Tell her. So that and allow her to, to obviously to have an opinion. Let the, a, a woman likes to know that she's able to engage in discussions with her man. Right? So Giselle, you could put another put one on the table. Yes, you know, listening to you there, Pussy, you know, what came to me as well as you as you said, you know, about that vision and that purpose. And you know, it comes back to him knowing who he is. And you know, I had a point where he must be a confident yet humble leader who depends on God to lead him because he knows that God is the one who will help him to make it all happen. And he knows that he has in 
understanding also that he has imperfection and he can't do anything without God. So hearing you speak there, that, that confidence, you know, a woman need a man who is confident yet humble and a man who will depend upon God, who sees and knows everything. Yes, yeah? so I really want to agree with you there with that point as well. And I know you spoke about um, um, her having a C and I would have had, you know, she needs to be um, heard and understood. So with her putting her having a say, mm -hmm. it's also being known that communication is so important because women like to know what is, mm -hmm. yes, as you say, on, on his heart, you know? So mm -hmm. she also wants to be understood, but she also wants to understand you know, where he's going, you know, what he's doing. So she needs that confident yet humble leader in her life. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, um, you know, if I may even add to that as well, that a woman, a woman, so the topic today is, is, is seven things that a woman desperately needs. A woman needs for the man in her life to truly listen and to understand her. Get to know me. Get to truly know me. The Bible says, dwell with your wife according to knowledge. And God has a reason why he says to so. So get to know me. Get to know the woman's likes, her dislike. And when you get to know the woman's like and her dislike, then she would want you to treat with her based on your knowledge. So if you know that I don't like this thing, don't do it. Try and don't do it if you know that I don't like it. And so in order for the man to know what the woman doesn't like, it's important for him to talk to her, to listen to her, to hear her, all right? That indicates to her that you care. Show her that you care, all right? Show her that you care. Acknowledge um, the fact that she's in your life and God has placed in your life for a purpose. And there are things that she likes and things that she dislikes. And if we have to live together comfortable, it's important for you to consider the things that I don't like. Also get to know the things that the woman likes and try and find a way with the help of God to meet the needs of the woman. Just try to help. Yes, Apostle, and I also have here, a woman needs a friend. And you know, Proverbs 17, 17 spoke about a friend loves at all times and is born as is a brother for adversity. So having a, and she wants that friend in significant other or husband, a best friend that she can share mm -hmm. her heart willingly to and know that they would love her he would love her. He would, as you say, listen to her and she will gain, he will gain that trust from her. He, she, wants, she wants to be able to trust him. So it means therefore she would want him to be consistent in his, um, his mannerism towards her, being consistent. Mm -hmm. Don't just saying something and not actions are not adding up to it. So she wants mm -hmm. that friend who is loyal. She wants that friend who is, you know, consistent in mm -hmm. their behavior towards her. Yes? Yes. Yes, that's right. I think consistency is so important for a woman. And men need to know this. Um, what I want to put on the table as well is that a woman, a woman needs, needs to know that her man is can manage the home, that he can lead, biblically speaking. You know, when we think about the book of Titus and Timothy, when the Bible talks about the qualities of a leader, a woman needs to know that he is a godly leader and he can take charge. A woman needs to know that, in line with that, that she's protected. Like how Boaz protected Ruth, a woman needs to know that um, her man is a man of standing. 
you know, my husband was alive. You know, even if I mean, my husband was a very cool kind of guy, but he just has to say one thing or just look at me, let's see. And it's like, surely, okay, you're going on too much. He doesn't have to tell me that. So what am I saying? A man must be, a man must have presence in his house, all right? Um, and as one person put it, a man that can calm her, but not control her, if you know what I mean. <laughs> a man that she can respect, not a weakling, if you know what I mean. Not a man who um, is not making any decision. He's, he's just there, but he's depending on the woman to do, to manage the home. That is not even the word, all right? He's depending on the woman to, to take charge. So the woman has to think about Everything, literally, for some men. And they are just there, just, I don't even want to say silent because it's more than silent. You're just there. A woman wants to know that her man, her husband, can really lead her, protect her in the ways of God. And she must feel secure and protected and, and comforted in the arms of that man. She, a woman doesn't want to know that she's the one who is in that role. That's a masculine kind of woman. A woman is a woman and a man is a man. All right. And yes, the, the, the God said in his word that let them have dominion. But the Bible also says that because the woman sinned, because of the woman sin, when she, she, she ate of the, of the fruit and all of that, the Bible says her leadership will be under the leadership. I see breaking up a bit. Pussy are breaking up. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Um, sorry about that. Um, Apostle. Yeah, so internet is getting a bit of a problem, but we will continue. She will come back in in a while. So I will continue a bit. You know, as she was saying that, you know, that a, a woman needs to be led. You know, the word of God would have said, you know, we are the weaker vessel. And I would have said earlier, and a person is alluding to it is that we need a, a woman needs a confident leader yet humble and we believe also that a woman uh, a woman needs to feel safe and protected and having that confident yet humble leader and someone who she can trust because she would experience that consistency in his behavior and she would also feel vulnerable to be open and share because she feels safe and protected. As, as women, we like to feel safe and protected by the one who is leading us. Yes. Another thing is that a woman, as a person will come back in in a while, a woman loves to feel and know that she is loved. And when she knows that she is loved, she can relax and a person of she, 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 she can be relaxed, you know, in the presence of her significant other. And, you know, having that relaxation where she could feel really that, yes, this person, I can share my heart, I can share my goals, I can share my vision without being you know, feel that I am not worthy to do what God has called me to do because a person would have spoken earlier about each one, each one of us, the female, the woman and the man have a purpose. And then That's God right. brings us together to fulfill his divine purpose, working together. So a woman in that space want to feel safe, want to feel protected and want to feel that her husband will encourage her to pursue her God given purpose. Amen. Yeah, that's right. I'm so sorry about that. I was using my phone and 
But you know, I'm on my laptop now. God is good all the time. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Um, I was what was I? I was talking about um a man really taking charge. And I wanted to emphasize that, um, Sister Giselle, because a lot of men leave it up to the women to take charge of the home. And a woman desperately needs to know that the man in her life is able to manage things, is able to handle things, is able to protect her, is able, as I say, a man that can calm her but not control her. That is very important for a woman. You don't want to be a woman in a home and you have to make all the decisions when the man is supposed to be the, be the leader. And when I came up just now, um, I was talking about a part, the pilot and the co-pilot, like the husband, also he's like the pilot and the wife is like the co-pilot, but they both are prepared and working together to carry the family to its destination. When anything happens to the husband, the wife has to be able to carry on, all right? And that's why it's so important for the husband or, or to be able to engage the wife in all the plans. She has to know the plan, all right? So a woman needs a man who is, who, 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 who is big on collaboration and communication, yeah? Um, another thing I wanted to place in the, on the table is that a woman needs seven things a woman desperately needs, but every man should know, that's our topic. A woman is a man who, who is humble enough to get help for his struggles. It's very important. A man who is able to cry out to God when he's going to, like David. David cried out to God. Like David, I think it was Psalms 51. David cried out to God when David realized that he was struggling. And I believe that that was around the time when, they, when David fell for Bathsheba and all that. Yeah, he, he succumbed to the temptation. But I believe that even if a man may have a struggle and the woman knows about it, a woman likes to know that he can be humble enough to get help and wise enough to know that if he doesn't get help, it's going to affect his relationship. A proud man cannot grow and everything and everyone around him will die or become stagnant. And when I say that, I mean that spiritually, that emotionally, that psychologically. A man must be able to assess himself, reflect, evaluate, and tell himself, you know what? I'm strong in this, but I'm not so strong in it. And seek help. Seek counsel from another, probably a male mentor, and engage his wife as well. Let them know. Mm -hmm. All right? So I needed to say that. This is just Yes, Apostle. And, you know, I would have had that point where a woman need a man who is real and um, no pretense. This is who I am. I have flaws and I'm working on it and I'm willing to change and do something about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, so a woman need a man who is real and, and she will understand when he can own up in yes. a sense of, okay, these are the flaws that I have, these are the things that I'm struggling with and I am working on it. And she sees the evidence of him willing and trying. And as the help meet, who is there to help will help him to really be able to overcome those struggles. Yes, that's right. And you know, one of the women that I spoke with, she said, a woman's space in her man's life must be solidified. I am yours. It's like, it's like the woman is supposed to know, hey, I am yours. I, be I belong to you, all right? And I even wanted to add to that by saying that a woman desperately needs a husband to continue to, and I'm putting it in quotes, pursue her even after the marriage. You know, we talk about Courting should be for the whole of your marriage, right? You never stop courting. And so when I talk about pursuing, that's what I'm talking about. Continue dating, continue being spontaneous. You know, don't be afraid of demonstrating, um, showing public affection and, you know, using words and touch and all of that. A woman needs to know, hey, when she goes out with her man, Sister Giselle, when she walks out with her man, she needs to know that, hey, from her man, this is my woman. This is my woman, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, she belongs to me. 
Yeah, and the woman knows as well, hey, that the man is saying, I'm yours. Her man is saying, babes, you don't worry, I, I am yours. I belong to you there. A woman, I'm, a, a woman needs to know, all right, that the space in a man's, in her man's life is solid, solid. She don't have to worry about when she steps out with him or even when he goes out on his own. She don't have to worry and think, oh my God, I wonder what he's doing. I wonder, she don't have to even, she wouldn't even think about digging up in the phone and checking the phone. No, 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 no. She's going to think about all of that. Because why? Because the way he's transformed, the Bible says Adam and Eve were naked and they were not um, ashamed. It means that they were open. He's so transparent with her. When she goes out with him, he's not flirtatious. He's not, as we say, he don't have a long eye. When, he's, when she's with him, he's looking at other women. For a woman that is disrespectful, yeah? And so that when she's not with you, she's not sure what you're doing. But a woman wants a man who is so confident in her man that whether she goes with him or not, she'd have to worry, she'd have to bat her eyes. she trust her man because the way he operates with her, she knows that she can trust him. That just by the way he deals with her. He's not afraid to hold her hand in public. He's not afraid, she's not afraid. Um, he's not afraid to hug her. You know what I mean? They, they, they go into, let's say they go into a building and he opens the door for her and he's able to say, you put his hand around her and allow her to go in. A woman, a woman like those kind of things, it says, you know, babe, it gives her that kind of, that kind of, how should I put it? Protected security in a man. You know what? A woman don't want a man, you go to the man, he just, he just rough and cruff. You know what I mean, sister Jesus? He just, you're walking with him and, and he waiting for you to open the door. What kind of man is that? A woman don't want a man like that. A woman wants a lady gentleman. Yes. Let me put it this way. Yeah, she wants him to show her that tender, loving care. Not to be patient and to be kind, mm -hmm. you know, and make her feel appreciated and yes. make her know that she can count on him even in times of adversity and you know, all that he would be there for her, even when she is going through mm -hmm. um, whatever she's going through that sometimes he may not say something, but a hug, yes. a kiss and saying, you know, babes, you know, I understand what you are going through. She wants a man who knows her and will know exactly what he, what, what she needs at a particular point in time when she is maybe going through, have a rough day. You know, she wants to know that he's there to, 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 you know, to pick, pick her up after a, a rough day, probably with the kids or, you know, whoever it is that I'm here supporting you. I'm here for you. That reassurance and that assurance that I am here for you. A woman needs that kind of assurance and that kind of, you know, and that is showing and letting her know that, you know, I love you. I love you. And women also like to, even though she may know, but she wants you to tell her ever so often what you mean, what she means to you. Yes. Yeah, that's right. That's very, very that's very correct. Ever so often. I think it's so important um, for a woman to hear her man say, and, and I say man because yeah, some of you may be in intimate relationships. So you understand what I'm saying, you know, um, verbalize it. A woman wants you to be able to verbalize it, all right? Look at her in her eyes and tell her. I remember my husband used to do that. He used to say, babes, stand. What, look at me. And it don't matter whether we walk in long it don't matter where. Babes, stand and look at me. Look at me in my eyes. And I would be like, hey, babe, what is going on with you? And then he would look at me straight in my eyes and he would say, I love you. You are the most beautiful woman in the world. A woman like when a man could compliment her. And express, as it says, Jesus says, express his love with the Bible says, husbands, love your wife. Christ loved the church and gave his life for her. Love. First Corinthians chapter 13. Love. Love her. Right? Love her. Kindness, thoughtfulness, self control. Love her. Love is kind, love is pure. Love protects, love keeps the record of wrong. Love her, demonstrate love to her. A woman likes that. A woman likes when you compliment her. There are some men, Sister Giselle, they complimented all kind of women. 
but they're not complimenting your, their own wife. Babes, I love that, how oh, that dress looks on you. Oh my God, you look so good, that's just a love. You know, compliment, a woman likes to be complimented. All right? It's just, it's just, I could imagine a man not complimenting his wife at all. You can imagine, a, a, I mean, come on. You're just not telling her anything. She just, she went to the hairdresser. She had a new hairstyle. And it, you have that. If, and you know, sometimes it's a Giselle, the woman complimenting the man, you know, but the man cannot open his mouth and tell the woman how he thinks that she looks. It's very, very important for a woman. All right? Yeah. A woman needs a man who, so Giselle wanted to say something, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just agreeing with you and, you know, um, sometimes, you know, they may respond and say, um, but you don't know you're looking nice. No, she wants to know if you find she's looking nice because she is yours and she wants to get it from you and not other persons out there, but from you because she loves you and she cares about you. Yeah, that's right. Because, I mean, it, a woman will think and she will wonder, how come when I go out, when I go out to work, all these men, and even women tell me, of course, she looks so nice. I just love you yourself. But your husband is not able to say it. I don't know, you know, Sister Jesus. I believe, I don't want to say it's pride, but I, I also believe that sometimes it's how, how a man learns to be a man. And that's the other thing. A man, a woman needs a man who is, who is mature and who, and who knows. If you don't know what you're supposed to, how you're supposed to be as a man, then learn, talk to, talk to men, get involved in sessions with men so that you can know, all right? Um, a woman needs a man who is not just, I'm talking here specifically considering the single women, all right? A single woman needs to know that a man is not all over her for her body. I need to say so. A true man of God, when he's checking out a woman, a man who is confident in God and knows where he's going. I mean, I, I, I don't want to say a real man, but you all know what I mean. Um, a man, a real man there. When he's looking, he's not looking for a girl, but he's looking for a wife. All right? And so a woman who is developing herself and preparing herself, herself to be a wife to a man needs a man to come around her not all taken up with the body and with the physical, but is able to say to her babes, you're you just so compassionate, you're so considerate. I just love it. You know, it cannot just be I like a smile. No, I'm not saying anything is wrong with it. Oh God, I just love your lips. Oh God, I just love, you know, those things are okay, but that must not be the focus of attention. That's the point I want to make. A man of substance would look at heart, would look at, um, qualities that would make a lasting marriage a man of substance. A man who knows where he's going, a true man of God who's looking for a wife would look deeper. You know, and God says, look where God looks. And God told Samuel in the book of Samuel, Samuel, don't look at the appearance because I've not chosen them. I've rejected them. Look where I look. Look at the heart. And that's where a woman wants a man to see a heart and not just to be taken over in a body. Because men, when you're taken over in the body and the physical, the woman believe that all you want is to have sex with her and that's about it. All right? A woman don't like that. A woman don't like when you judge her by, by your experiences with, with women out there. A woman don't like when you come around her and you are disrespectful because of how you believe based on how your mother treated your father. A woman is how a woman is valued. A woman don't like that. A woman would prefer if you check her out properly and because of what you have learned about her, you approach her in a particular way. But may I say, Generally speaking, no matter what a woman may have experienced or how she sees herself, a man is supposed to, um, to, uh, to, to, how should I put it, to approach a woman with much respect. Even though she don't respect herself, you respect her. Because I heard someone say, um, share one time where she literally took off her clothes for the man 
with the pastor and the pastor told her, put back on it, please. Put it back on. That's a real man. And that's the point I'm trying to make. A real man will say, uh, let, me, let me say this, a man of God, a true man of God will say, put back on your clothes. You're precious to God. I see you as precious in God's sight. Put back on your clothes. Huh? That's the kind of man, not a woman. A woman wants a man who could say, hey, but you are made in the image of God. You're special to God. Don't do that. God loves you. A man who can fill up a woman. I'm talking to single women especially. This is Giselle. Yes, you know, Apostle, I want to agree with you there. You know, a man who, you know, the word of God speak about a man washing a woman with the word of God. So he will treat her, he will guide her, and he will lead her according to how Christ will lead his church. And yes. what you just would have said there, you know, she may do things that, or do something that you said as a single woman, that is not right. Mm -hmm. A man of God and a true man of God will revert or to the word of God. And as you say, he will treat her, he will respect her, and he will, you know, really guide her and instruct her according to the word of God, because that is love. That is what love is. Love is not just, as you said, the externalities, not just the outward adorning, but, you know, it's more than that. It's really leading and guiding and, and really helping to mold and shape that woman into who God has called her to, to be. And when he does that, it will be easier. You realize that woman will just submit because what she is really looking for is that kind of, of, of gentleman who will respect her, who will take care of her, who will lead her according to how Christ would want her to be led and she will easily submit to him. Mm -hmm. That's right. And um, if I may add to that, um, and someone just put on the chat, you know, that's why he should be submissive to God and so very correct because a woman wants a man who will not just say that I know the word and I could pray and have a relationship with God. And um, he's always reading his Bible. That's good. He's studying. He's, he could pray. He could do ministry. He could do it. But at the same time, he does not put aside time for his wife. That is very, very important. A woman wants a man who's able to balance. Because with all the time that you stay in and doing stuff, you, when you come home, you're tired. Yes, you love the Lord and you could do all of that, but you're not spending time with your wife. And God wants you to spend time with her. So a woman, a woman desperately needs a man who can balance properly he knows how to balance his time he's in the world you know like the proverbs to the one woman and the man you know he's a, he's at the gates you know a man who knows who knows how to spend time with the wife and with the children and the work a, a man is supposed to be balanced there must be time with the wife it must be um a woman, and at the same time, a woman desperately needs a man who will fight for his marriage. A woman needs to know that she is so dear to this man that he's willing, even, if, even though it may take a while for them to work on the marriage, but he's willing to work on that marriage he wouldn't just throw in the towel and give up on his marriage like that. She wants to know that, you know what? He really, he, he really and truly cares. Because to me, when you fight for your marriage, you're saying to your wife that, you know what? I, I, I am in this for the long haul. The vows that I made on the wedding day, I, I knew what I said. It was for me. It was for truth. All right? A woman don't want a man who at the slightest disagreement in the marriage 
you switch off and you're ready to run. You're not talking, you're ready to, you, you're ready to, um, to take a, to go off for days, no. And in the same way, because I don't want, the men have their time on the platform, but I'm saying as well that a, a man doesn't want the money will just leave and run. But I'm saying as today we're dealing with what the woman desperately needs. You want a man who will be able to be the leader in the home, in the marriage, and say, you know, babes, we need to talk. Babes, I don't like what is happening. That's what my deceased husband used to do. He used to say, babes, I don't like what's going on. We need to talk. A, a woman wants a man to be a man. You want to be a man. You can't when things happen in the marriage or so, or in the relationship. You are the one who moving aside. And no, what, what, what? What, what kind of behavior is that? No, uh-uh. No, 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 no. You are the leader. You are the leader. You can imagine the pastor just leave everybody in the church and he get back with the congregation and he just walk out the church and go about his business. A pastor wouldn't do that. The man is the priest of the home. So if the man is the priest of the home, he can't just walk out from the home just like that. No, 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 no. A man must be able to manage his household. According to the word of God, a woman wants a man who will seek the, this Holy Spirit of God for direction. A woman wants a man who will say, babe, let's pray. A family that prays together, stays together. A woman wants a man. She desperately needs a husband who will be able to pull the children together around the table and say, come on, we're going to get into the word and keep bringing up the children in the fear of the, word, of the Lord and not waiting for the Sunday school to do it. A woman wants a man who loves God desperately. Yeah, and who takes up his, his spiritual position in the home. Yes, yes, Apostle. And a woman wants a man who will pay attention when she is talking. Yes. You know, to pay that attention. So it's like that coming apart and let's sit and let's have a conversation what is going on between both of us especially when you feel a distance yeah. that was not there before she mm -hmm. wants to talk about it i know some men needs time to process and it's time to think and i know as women we have to understand that but not putting it off that every time she says, you know, we need to have a discussion because this is about both of us and it's affecting us and it will affect the home and it will affect the children. We need to have a discussion so we can deal with this to know if we need to go into therapy, if we need to go into counseling mm -hmm. so that we can ensure that our marriage and our relationship is secure, that it will benefit us in the long run as well as the family. She wants a man who will pay that attention, who will have that quality time, take time out to listen so that, and, and she wants to be heard of what is going on with her. She wants you to listen, pay attention, and so that we can take the necessary action in due time so that it can be fixed. Yeah, that's right. And let me add to that. So a woman wants to know that the man in her life is willing to listen and understand. So it's not just go ahead, I hear in you, but you're on the phone. Girl, I tell you, I hear in you, but you're watching the TV. No. A woman wants to know that a man would lead his marriage and his home seriously, take the responsibility so that when there's an issue in the home, the man, you only hear what's saying it, the man, you are the leader. You got to be able to test the temperature and the atmosphere in the home and engage your helper. Engage your helper. And the helper as well, because she's helper, she as well will be able to say, babes, you know, Things are going well, let's talk. So she can do it. And when she does it, put aside the time. A woman wants a man who, and says, a friend of mine gave me this, who can be sensitive to her needs. Mm -hmm. Knows when she's not in the mood. Knows when she's having a month, please. And, and don't force her to have sex when she's having a month. You know, 
a woman wants a man who will be sensitive to the menopause and the hormonal thing as well. Be sensitive. All right, you're all in this together because the babes are realized, you know, you're not excited as you used to be. You know, let's talk about it. Talk to me. Is there something that I'm not doing? Is there? Let's go to the doctor. A woman wants to know that her husband, all right, is sensitive to her emotions, her moods. All right? Know when to take the lead. Not every man knows how to deal with a strong woman. That's another thing. Sometimes you may have a woman who is very um, skilled and talented and even in ministry, she, she could really preach or she could pray or she could teach, right? You may be a minister or you may be in the pantry. It is important for a man to know, and this is, why, this is why the first thing that I put on the platform is vision, all right? And we spoke about purpose and destiny because if you know, trust me, if you know, right, that you know where you are in terms of your relationship with God and holistically speaking, all right, you have an idea, you could down the road, you could share with you, and this is what we're going to do, this is what it's going to look like, and this is what I'm doing now, and you are passionate about purpose. It would be very easy for you to applaud her and say, babes, you go ahead and do it. You wouldn't grouse when she, when she had to go to classes and all of that. You, you, you're going and do another course again. So much possible. If you're discussing vision and purpose and destiny, you wouldn't grouse like that. It has to be that there is no discussion. And once there's a discussion and you understand what God has placed on the inside of your woman and you know where you're going and you know that what she has will help you to go where God wants the marriage to go. It's going to be easy. You wouldn't fight her down. You would say, babes, go on. I remember, and I use it in my own life, I remember when I was at UV, my husband, he would cook and come home and make sure the kids, and I have three sons, right? I did, never do it. But he would do his part. Right? He died just before I completed my master's degree. I didn't even want to graduate, I told my children. I didn't want to go to the graduation when, when, when I, was, I completed my master's degree. Because I say he made so much sacrifices. Although he had his, his management courses that he would do as well. But he made a lot of sacrifices for me to do my first degree and my, my master's degree. And, so, and then my son said, no moms, dad will want you. Daddy will want you to walk on the stage, all right? And, so, and this is why I know what I'm talking about. A woman, I remember when I graduated with my Bachelor of Science degree, he was there, he was so proud of me. A woman needs a man who can celebrate her. A woman needs a man who can say, babes, you're going to minister. Let me pray for you before you go. And he prays and he says, you're born. God is going to use you mightily. And when she comes back up, you can ask her. So tell me, what is the spirit of God is? A man, a woman. A woman is a man. Let me tell you something. If you do that with your woman, she's going to thrive. And when she thrives, you will thrive. You will look good. You know why the Proverbs 31 woman, man, the, the Proverbs 31 woman husband look good in the square he was there because of the woman that he had. And I know some of you may say, no, you know what you're talking about. I don't want my woman to do all them things. I want her to stay home. But if you want your woman to stay home, I hope you know what you're doing. I hope so. We have some stay home moms and I'm not going to trivialize the importance of that. That's very important. But can you really respect a woman who sacrifices going out there to, work, to take care of the woman to make sure that the children are well cared for and even homeschooled? Uh, can you appreciate that? Because from my understanding, a lot of our men don't even appreciate that you want to, but can you appreciate it? That's the question. And a woman needs to know that even though she makes a decision, that the man can appreciate her, applaud her, and be there with her as well, even when he comes home. You know what I mean? He's able to just still support and bless her, take her on a vacation, send her off on a holiday. Do stuff and say, babes, you know what? I'm taking a day off today. You rest. I'm taking a day off and I'm going to cook and organize. Can you do that? Or is it that because she's doing that, you want to treat her as though she's a slave? A woman do not like when a man treat her as though she's a slave. She's not a slave. She's a very important part of your life. God brought Eve to Adam to be his. 
helper. It means that whatever Adam had to do, he needed Eve. And you need that woman. Right? So a woman wants a man who is not intimidated by her talent, her skills, her abilities, but will be able to identify it and embrace it along with his and come together with her and make one vision for the family. One will put a thousand to fly, but two, all the enemy coming up against this. All right, and as I mentioned last week, I think I said, sometimes our men are so busy digging up in somebody else's life. You have a gift, God gave you a gift of a woman, a wife, all right? And even for those of you who are going to get married and you're already engaged and you know this is a person, God brought this person into your life. And sometimes we could be so busy digging up in other people's life and not the one that God has given to you as a gift. So you could tell me everything about Mary and Jane in work. They can tell me about your wife. I know, I know Mary like um, macaroni pie and lasagna. But if I ask you, what is your wife's favorite food you don't know? But you could tell me everything about when you want in work or your neighbor know, but you don't know your wife. And what am I saying? Get to know the one that God has given to you. A woman likes to know that she can, co she can contribute to a man's success as he moves forward. Sister Giselle. Yes, Apostle. You know, and a woman wants, and I think I'm adding to what you said, a man who would encourage her, build her up, push her forward. A woman also, and you know, for the singles, you know, who wants a man who will pursue her, you know, who will go after her because he sees someone that God would have presented to him and he would pursue that one. Yes. Um, I want to go back a little what, what that you were saying, you know, sometimes with, with menopause and, and, and those stuff, and sometimes you know, having that conversation and even a man who would educate himself about what it's all about and what his wife is going through. So a, a man who loves his wife and really wants that marriage to work, uh, he would educate himself about menopause or whatever the issue that the woman is going through at the point in time. So he will be better able to understand why mm -hmm. she is behaving the way she does through that, that, that natural uh, process that God would have um, put, you know, um, um, women, allow women to go through is a, part, a natural part of biology. And he will like, yeah. educate himself about it to know how to treat it her and know how to support her during that time. That's right. It's very important. And educate himself about it when he engages her in conversations. And they could talk about it. A woman needs a man who is clean. A man who pays attention to personal hygiene. A man who likes to take a bath. It's very important. Especially when you're coming in your bed, when you're retiring for the evening. A woman desperately needs a man to shower, take a bath, make sure he's clean, that he smells good. A woman likes when a man smells good. Right? A woman desperately needs a man to take his time. And remember, this is for 18 years and over. If you have any children around, I would suggest that you, you make some adjustments, right? A woman likes, um, a wife likes a husband to be affectionate. All right? So when the men were on, the men said, a man likes sex. I mean, no, a man likes sex. Women like sex as well. A, ma a woman wants a man to know that God has placed within her the desire to want to have sex. And so a woman wants a man to know that she really wanted to. And she wants a man to know that the same way he would want it, and he wants to make sure that he is satisfied, all right? A woman wants the man to know that she wants him to show the interest in her to make sure that she's also satisfied. A woman doesn't like it when you please yourself and then you leave her and she's not satisfied. A woman likes, desperately needs a man to take his time and make love to her. 
a woman, a wife, doesn't like a wife because sex is only for married people as far as the Bible is concerned, and that's what we follow. If you're not married, you should not be having sex. It is not right in the sight of God. A, a, a wife wants a husband to be affectionate, and we would have talked about that a little bit earlier. All right, take your time. Don't just, don't just wait for the night time to come. And that's the only time you're showing affection. And for some folks, no affection at all. A woman wants a husband to be loving and caring and kind and considerate, even if they may have a disagreement. She doesn't want him to take away his love. A woman wants, the wife wants him to love her unconditionally. And so, so that during the day, the little things that he will do, the little messages he would send on the, on the, the phone, yeah, and the things that he will promise someone she's leaving. All these things, a woman wants a man to demonstrate. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, go back to your first love. I have fought against you. John's letter to the church in Ephesus, I have fought against you. Go back and do the things that you used to do at first. So a woman wants, a wife wants her husband to continue to court her. Don't just wait for the night time to come. You're not showing any kind of love, demonstration of love during the day, over the last week, over the last month, as the case may be. But in the night, you're coming now. I'm telling all your men, and this is you. Um, I could get some. What kind of thing is that? Huh? What kind of thing is that? The way you treat with a woman every day as a normal part part of your day will determine how receptive she's going to be when that time comes. Let me tell you this. If you demonstrate affection to that woman and she don't have struggles, let's say, with the menopause and all of that because they have medication for those things, right? When the night time comes, you don't, you don't have to bet so. And not only that, a woman like when a man could, um, you don't necessarily have to ask, but the way you will come, and the way you may hug me, the way you may just kiss me on my neck, the way you, you're sending things all day, you're, you're demonstrating it all day. So when evening time comes, you will come, you will say something, oh my God, I just love to see that thing. You've got to, our men have to loosen up. Our men must loosen up. We are just there. You're just, you don't, you know, a lot of our men, not all, not anybody on the platform today, all the, all the different. Right? But a lot of our men, you just like to, it's like you just want to be served. All right? That this kind of sexual serving kind of mentality where you're just there and, um, and when you're ready for it, she must just come and serve you and you don't want to do nothing. We have a lot of men who are very lazy sexually. Demonstrating affection is plenty work for a lot of our men. A woman desperately needs a man to take his time and make love for her desperately need and and to demonstrate acts of kindness during the course of the day doing different things and saying different things all of that will help to prepare her to be able to respond to you at times you will not even have to go to her first she herself will come to you a woman needs that sister giselle yes a person that consistency as well in in, in those areas as well not just when they feel that they want sex, but the consistency of pleasing and making the, the wife, you know, feel appreciated and that appreciation is so important. Yes. That it, it will be easy for the wife to give more of herself to you. A woman also needs stability and commitment. Mm -hmm. Stability and commitment is so important for women. They want to know that you are um, mature enough or grown enough to say, okay, I would settle with you and not just a fling or just for, you know, to just show off. But yeah. stability and commitment is very important to a woman. Yeah, that's right. Very correct. Very, very correct. You know, um, when I was talking to, I spoke to about three women to get their views on, on you know what a woman desperately needs and 
You know, I spoke to somebody in their 70s, I spoke to somebody in their 60s, I spoke to somebody in their 50s, all right? And uh, one of the things that one person mentioned to me, and I wanna put it on the platform, she said, she said, a man must have presence, presence, the anointing. And she said, when he, when he walks into the room, the atmosphere must shift. You're talking here now, she said, Giselle. <laughs> A man of God who loaded with the anointing. He, I mean, like he's close to God. If you know what I mean, the relationship with God is intimate. A man who has a tremendous anointing upon his life, and a man, the Christian man, the man of God who is able to maintain that anointing because of his love for God and his relationship with God. Not a man like Saul. When Saul disobeyed God, King Saul, and and um, the Bible talks about God telling sending Samuel to him. And the scripture that speaks about um, it is better to obey than to sacrifice. And the Bible says the anointing left soul. All right. But a Christian woman, a, a woman, a wife, of, a woman of God really wants a man who really loves God and, you know, spends time with God. Um, a wife wants a man that she knows goes into the study. He goes, she sees him with his Bible and his notebook and his pencils and his head. She sees him. Studying the word, you know what I mean? She sees him on his knees praying. It must be a situation where the wife is in the room and she's, and she's praying. And then he's hardly praying and he, well, like a man, a spiritual man, he knows how to stay plugged into the frequency of God and who is able to war for his family, battle for his family, fast and pray for his family. That's kind of mad. When things are happening, he said, babe, so let's pray. She will hear him when she get up, gets up in the in the view hours in the morning and she goes to the bathroom. She must hear him in the living room or wherever he's in the prayer room. He catch up, da, 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 da. She must stand boring for his family. A woman, a Christian woman, like that. Yes, Apostle. And it makes her feel safe and secure knowing yes. that this husband you know this man depends upon God who sees and know everything so I feel safe and secure knowing that he is really you know watching over the family and you know the the, the husband ought to be the protector but yeah. how protect protecting what we've got in the spiritual realm you need to be protected because we wrestle not against flesh and blood and most times the attacks are coming the attacks that are coming the attacks are not what the flesh and blood we, we are seeing. So a husband who can pray and intercede and warfare and depend upon God, you know, for his family, that wife will feel, yes, I'm safe and secure because I have a man who depends on God. Yes. My sister Giselle, you know, we came on the platform to talk about seven things that a woman desperately needs. <laughs> what every man is supposed to know and, you know, we are speaking mainly from a, uh, thank you so much, um, Brother Andy. <laughs> we are speaking from a spiritual perspective. But you know something, Sister Giselle, there are some women who may not even agree with some of the things that we have said. Because I believe it all depends on the value system of the woman. What I will need and that the woman may not need. A woman may say, if that question is posed to me, I desperately need a man to give me money. <laughs> You know, what she may say, I desperately need a man to, to do what or whatever, you know. But again, what we try to do is to read the back of what we're saying based on the word of God. The Bible talks about the man, the rule of the man, washing his wife with the word, loving her, dwelling with her according to knowledge, and so on, you know, and um, respect and honoring her, you know, um, as a weaker vessel as well. So that's where we are coming from. But we know that, uh, but you know what? Um, it's important for us to see this so that even if, um, a woman who um, doesn't have the biblical values, if she hears this, then she would know that there's another way. There's another way, you know, and that she doesn't have to, to take um, any kind of treatment from a man because she now comes to understand how God values her and how she's unique and she has worth. And so she should expect the best from a man. I really want to. You know, as I say again, happy Mother's Day to all our mothers, you know, and um, um, I, I pray that, you know, even we will, we will endeavor to be the best, the best version of ourselves. And so uh, a woman wants a man 
who can help her to be the best version of herself. A woman wants a man who can show her off. My wife, my wife, my wife. This is my wife, this is my woman. And he's proud of her. A woman likes that when a man can be proud of her. A woman likes when a man can, can esteem her and can speak well of her. A woman doesn't like when a man is verbally abusive and pulls her down and makes her feel like a tramp and a prostitute. A woman do like that. A woman likes when you can when you can build her up. And when you build her up, then it's easy for her to submit to you. When you build and you love up, you love her. All right? You love her. It's easy now for her to, for her to just submit and to, to give you that respect that you so deserve. Sister so, Giselle? Um, and yes, a person I want is coming to me as well, and you know, as I heard you um, spoke there as well, is a woman is a man who is provider. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is provider, and she doesn't want to feel that like she alone, even though she's a working woman, that all the pressure is upon her. And yes. it may be somebody today and feel that way. A woman needs a provider. And God would have um, instructed in, in his word, a man is the one to provide as well. You know, I know in today's world that like, both of us are working and we support each other financially, the home. But as a leader, because a woman is a leader, she wants to know that that man can provide for her. She looks for stability as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. A woman also wants to know that if you say that you love her as a single woman and you care for her, she wants to know that you can get your act together, get to know you, get some help for you and get married to her. She don't want to know that she's just in your life and you just are going around in circles. A woman doesn't like that. Get yourself organized. Know your vision, your purpose, your destiny, your relationship with God, that intimate relationship with God. And then after that, you know, you're just, you know, you, you're able to talk to her. Put a question to her, yeah? Let her know that you don't just want her just to be around and you, you, the relationship is not going anywhere. You don't have any focus, no direction. But she wants to know that you have a plan. You have a plan. It must just, well, we will see next year. But we'll see, you're thinking about it, you know, you do a woman who wants a man like that. All right? And the Bible was very clear about, it's very clear, and the Bible says in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and to take care of it. A man must be able to work and manage and take it. So, all right, it's right there. All right, right in the word. All right? And, uh, you know, even in terms of um, the book of, Timothy and Titus, the Bible talks about, you know, the, the, the first Timothy chapter three, a leader, because a man is a leader in his home. He must be above reproach. All right, the husband, but one wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not going to drunkenness. A woman doesn't want a man who drinks alcohol and you always your breath smelling. No, 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 no. Not violent. A woman wants a man who protects her, not to be violent towards her, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a love of money. Because some men could be very quarrelsome as well. This is why God puts it in his word in 1 Timothy chapter 3. Okay, and so it's right here. It's right here. Yeah? And so I believe that we would have placed a lot. Our topic today um, is the seven things that a woman desperately needs and what every man needs to know. And we would have touched on a number of them, all right, drawing from information that we would have gotten from other women, which I would have spoken to and from, you know, even from my own life and the things that I, I would have experienced with my husband. And even in my years of working with women, 20, how much years of working with women, both in terms of a mentor, and professional counseling and just engaging with women in groups and all of that. I, I have learned a lot from other women as to what is important to women. And so, um, you know, we would have used that today to put the points on the table that we want our men to pay attention to. Remember, we would always say that 
as a man, you want to ensure that your relationship with God is intimate. And when you, when you love your wife and you love your woman from that place of intimacy with God, it's, it's a different kind of love that you feel. All right? I struggle to understand persons who, anybody of Christ, who know the word, could pray. They, I mean, ministry is powerful, but the wife don't feel loved. It means that there's something that you're not doing. A woman needs to know that she's loved by her man. The Bible says, husband, love your wives. That's why I love the church. Amen. Closing words, sister. Giselle? Yes, Apostle And you know what came to me as well, because um, with love, knowing that you, they are, they are loved, but that trust, mm -hmm. that trust, being trustworthy, she needs to know that she can trust you. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, yeah. Yeah. That is important. Right. Um, yeah, to have like trust goes hand in hand, trust and love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, goes hand in hand. That's right. And you know, when we, we, we would have touched on that earlier when we spoke about can you say no to a woman's advances, especially a woman that you're attracted to? Can you say no? You will see women as you go out there that you will admire, but can you say no to the advances of a woman who will come on to you? Because they will come on to you. A woman needs to know that her husband is disciplined and self-controlled so that she can trust him. All right? Seek first to understand than to be understood. It is be slow to speak, but quick to listen and to hear. That's what I want to leave you with. Be slow to speak and quick to listen. Listen so that you will be able to identify the needs of a woman. We are celebrating Mother's Day tomorrow. I believe that Mother's Day should be celebrated every day. All right? And even as I mentioned that, a mother, a mother needs to know that um, the father of her children is taking care of his children. She needs to know that. That you are playing the role of father and taking care of your children, even if you are not in a relationship anymore. She needs to know that you are making a contribution financially, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, socially, all things with your children. And so I pray that even as we celebrate Mother's Day tomorrow, I pray that our mothers will certainly feel honored tomorrow. I'm saying honored every day, but tomorrow we are celebrating Mother's Day. And I wanna encourage the men to do something extra special for her and to make it your duty as a resolution, be intentional about demonstrating love to her as you go through the years, even if there's disagreement. Women, I want you all to know that you all are created, each one of us, God has created us unique and special in our own way. And even as I mentioned that, a woman wants to know that you are not comparing her with your past relationships. That you are not saying, if it was jo um, Dick, if it was Dora or Jane, she would not have done that. A woman do like that. A woman wants to know that you see her as a special and as an individual, not, not to be compared with anybody else that you had in the past. And so I'm saying that now to say that as we celebrate Mother's Day, ensure that your, the special mother in your life feels and knows that she's special to you. Yeah, very special to you. Amen, you're quiet on the platform. Oh, you're all quiet too. <laughs> oh my word, I wanna thank you all so much for logging on today. The enemy really tried to mess me up with my phone, but I thank God by my laptop is right at my side and the word of God is still being released. God's heart is for marriages to be strong, relationships to be strong, families to be strong. And, you know, um, mothers, you know, my heart go, goes out to those of you who have children who are giving so much trouble. I pray that you will continue, no matter what, <clears throat> to demonstrate love. Love them. Love them. Love them unconditionally because God loves us in spite of how we behave and the things that we do. Love your children. We shout to your children. Pray for your children. Love, 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 love. 
love and you know mothers as well there are some men who do mean any harm and they want to see their children it's important for them to see their children if they don't mean any harm try to work with them co-parenting is important so that the children will have the fathers involved in their lives and you men on the platform if you are in the position where you have the children and the woman wants to see the children and you don't want her i pray that you will be able to work it out once no harm will be done, that she will be able to see the children. All right? So let's do something a little bit different this Mother's Day, as the Lord will have us. Let's try to see if we can unite families as much as possible, because the children need to know that the mommy and daddy are involved in their lives. So again, I thank you all for coming. I thank Sister Giselle so much for sitting in with me. Pastor Mark couldn't make it today, but then today we wanted to really speak to our women and let our men know what we expect of them. I, I try to think about what we left out. We talked about so many things because I mean, there are other needs that women have, but I, I, I also want, you know, even a woman, a woman who may say, I don't, I don't really need all them things. I don't even mind being, being with a married man. I don't mind. I pray that when you listen to this, that you're going to realize that God has created you specially, you are unique, and that you wouldn't settle for nothing but the best. That's my prayer. The best. You deserve the best. Yeah? My number is 7421628. You can take a note of it. 7421628 so that you can contact me if you want to. Let me say it again. 7421628. We are here every Saturday. Our mandate is to ensure that the word of God and the order of God for marriage is preserved. So when we come, we talk to singles. How do you prepare yourself for marriage? How do you how, what do you look for when you're looking? All right. You know that a woman and a man is supposed to prepare themselves. And the first phase is your relationship with God, because that's the only thing that will keep you when you get married. The foundation must be strong. And then we want to help married couples to build and to restore the marriages, to guide them and to build them so that the marriages will be strong. That's why we come on a Saturday. So even though you don't get a flyer from us, we are here every Saturday at four o'clock in Jesus' name. All right? On a, on a Saturday at six, Shortly, we have our youth segment. You all know what's going on with our young people. All right. And that's for secondary school children up to age 35. Our single and married segment at 4 o'clock from 45 30 is for 18 years and over. But our youth segment, and by the way, I have to apologize because last week we didn't really have the youth segment because Pastor Dex and Pastor Camille had something to attend to. All right. But they are on at six o'clock today dealing with the same topic that they were supposed to treat with last week all right we have our bible study our, our study of the word and discussion on a wednesday at 6 30 and i tell you we have a tremendous time in the presence of the lord let me tell you all this preaching is important basically teaching when you teach something happens with that word is like it's internalized in your system all right so we have our time on a wednesday at 6 30 we are inviting you all once you don't have anywhere or anything to do you come on using the same Zoom link on a Saturday, on a Wednesday at half past six. All right, sometimes we will have our communion. Sometimes we take up our offering. And by the way, I'm getting ready to go on missions. We will be in Tobago shortly on missions. Next month, I'm going to Jamaica. I'm taking a team every time I leave. I want you all to contribute to missions. As we travel, we go out to do the work of the Lord. We have to pay, we have to buy tickets. We have to pay for hotel accommodation. Excuse me, really pay our way through and we cover the prayer of the saints and the financial support of the saints as well. On a Sunday morning, we have our children's church. And when our children's church is going on, I go out into the communities and I preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to people in the streets and house to house. That's what we do when we are not on the platform. But our children are on the platform with um, evangelist um, Lydia and Brother McKean. Tomorrow, we will be at Pastor Mark's Mother's Day service. At the minister there, keep me in prayer. And I know the folks will be going there. Feel free to go there as well. Pastor Mark's number is 762-4896. 762-4896. If you want to know where um, the service will be held, it will not be on the platform. You can feel free. If you don't have a home church, feel free to join um, us at Pastor Mark's. Church New Life Healing Deliverance and Prophetic Ministry, 
tomorrow morning, which starts at 9.30. And then next week, we are back here. Amen. So God bless your sisters and sisters. Can you pray for our mothers on the platform? And I guess I know we have some money on the platform as well, thanks. Praise the name of the Lord. Heavenly Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. And we give you all the glory. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for all the mothers upon the platform this evening, oh God. Father, Lord, we ask you to bless them. We ask you to strengthen them. We ask you to keep them. We ask you, oh God, to anoint them in a special way and continue to give them the strength, oh God, to be the mothers that you have called them to be in the mighty name of Jesus. Continue to impart your wisdom that will help them, oh God, to train up, oh God, their children in the way that they should go and they will not depart thereof, oh God. Bless the men, oh God. Help the men, oh God, in the name of Jesus to do oh God, what you have called them to do. Help the men, oh God, to treat the women as you would have them to treat, oh God, the women in their lives, oh God. Those who don't know what to do, I pray, Holy Spirit, as they reach out to you after this program, Lord Jesus, that you will, oh God, help them, oh God, to implement, oh God, what they have learned here today. In the mighty name of Jesus, cover each and every one under your precious blood and let them know, oh God, that they are loved. And we want them to know, Lord, that you love them with an everlasting love. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving everybody say amen amen and amen. amen thank you so much sister giselle and the segment last week i know that pastor dexter i knew he was busy all week so he's getting ready to upload it on the youtube channel so look out for our segment from last week it wasn't posted early all right but you can still listen to it and then this one will be posted on all right so put a heart let's let's send a shout out to the women on the platform the mothers spiritual mothers, biological mothers, put a heart on the platform, unmute your mic and send out, you can unmute your mic and it will be taking the next two minutes. You can unmute your mic and send out a shout. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Have a wonderful day tomorrow. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. Have a wonderful day tomorrow. Yes, thank you so much. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love, 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 love. Happy Mother's Day, ladies. Thank you. Have a wonderful day tomorrow. God willing. Thank you. All right. There are a lot of spiritual mothers. They never go, oh, but they have children. So we want to acknowledge them as well. Spiritual yes. mentors. Man, yes. I love you all plenty, plenty. And see you all next time. Next we love time. you all. Love you very much. Blessings, everyone. Have a good, a good Mother's Day. Thank you. Thank you.